Isaiah 65, Jude, the 65th book of the Bible. I am sought of them that ask not of me. I am found of them that sought not, that sought me. And what we're looking at is the condition of Israel. They're not looking for God. And yet God's going to be found of them through Jesus Christ in the, in the second advent. I said, behold me. Behold me, verily, verily, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands, you know, looking for, come. Like a parent would do for a child. They put their hands out and suspect a child to come running. <clears throat> All the day unto a rebellious people, Israel, which walketh in a way that was not good. That's the whole testimony of Israel. And spiritually applied to the Christian. After their own thoughts, their own ideas, their own opinions. Listen, and I'm not saying God's finished with Israel because he's not. But the Jew today, 2021, says, I'm following the law of Moses. Okay? And you go three times a year to Jerusalem, you're males. No, you don't. And if you do, you go and bring your sacrifices to the temple that's not there. You're not being faithful to the law. You're not adhering to the law because the law has been made void by God that the temple is not there. That they are in utter rejection of God because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the high priest. It is by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, not the lambs of uh, uh, not the blood of lambs and goats. And that Israel will say that Isaiah 53, which we read, is them, and the one persecuting Isaiah 53 is the Gentiles. You're wrong. A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face. And Jacob's trouble is going to deal with God's chastisement upon the Jew. It is called Jacob's trouble that sacrifice in gardens and those gardens are a reference to Tammuz and you find those gardens today all over the place these little kind of mini gardens and you know the uh, bonsai tree and little uh, oriental gardens. That's Tammuz. And burneth incense upon altars of brick. That's a fireplace. That's a fire pad. You find them in Gentile backyards today. And that you would find an artificial temple. In backyards today, you will find a house that would be the temple. You find a swimming pool that would be the brazen all uh, labor. Then you find the barbecue pit that'd be a type of hand, that'd be type of the brazen altar. If you were to fly over the houses in, in an airplane or a helicopter, and men don't even know what they're doing. Brick is what they made slime for mortar in the, the time of Tower of Babel. Don't tell me your religion doesn't go back to Babel. The religion of, of Israel and Judah has gone back to Babel. Babylon. And today you got, in towns and all that, you got the victory garden. Everybody makes a community garden. 
But who cares about Jesus? We're going to feed you with food. We're going to save the whale. But who cares about your soul? Which remain among the graves. They're hanging out with the dead. Halloween. And I'm going to say it. These memorial services for, for dead veterans that they bring in the churches. You say, well, David had his mighty men. Yeah, but they weren't dead. Urias was mentioned as before he died. After Lazarus died again, you don't read about him in the scriptures. And lodged in the mount in the monuments. That's the monuments of the graves. Listen, when Jesus went to the, the maniac Cadura, he's in the tombs, he's in the monument, he is a crazy devil of legions. Here they are now. They are camping out and living in the graveyards. It's the horror movies. Before movies were ever made to be. These are the Jews. And this is your Christians today. And eat swine's flesh. What happened to the law? Swine was completely forbidden under the law. And here are Jewish people and they're cooking pork and barbecuing pork. On patios of brick. And eating it. And broth of abominable things in their vessels. Of the dietary laws that they're making food of things that God said don't make food of. Maybe lobster. There's another place we're going to read about. I don't think we read about yet. That they were, they're actually eating mice. And other unclean animals. So, it's, well, you know, Peter, you know, he was, he was caught eating, you know, you know, detestable foods and all that. And then, you know, when the, when the Jews came and he, you know, he took all, Paul rebuked him. Uh, they were doing it in the Old Testament too. Recorded by Isaiah through the Holy Spirit. Isaiah says, listen, I see you eating the pork. God says, I see you eating the pork. That wasn't nothing new. Which say, stand by thyself. <laughs> you can do it. Come not near me. For I am holier than thou. There, there's expression. Everyone where that expression came from? Isaiah 65. Don't you tell me what to do. I am holier than thou. I know what God has in my life. I know what God said. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. Don't tell me. I'm a scholar. I got the Hebrew. I got the Greek. God has special revelations to me. You see the tea leaves. You see the crystal balls. You see, you know, my horoscope in the paper. I've got great knowledge of God. I'm good. I let my light shine. These are Jews who are violating the law in the period of the law. Friend, there are Christians today violating the standards of Christian, what the Bible said. And you know, we're right. We're a great church. We're wonderful and great. Your Easter and your Christmas, well, those are church holidays. You're no different from the Israelites and the Jews in Isaiah and Jeremiah's time. And we're coming up to Jeremiah. And, and listen, you don't want to hear me preach. You better pray the Lord calls the rapture in a couple days. You better pray the rapture happens before Monday because, Lord willing, Monday will start Jeremiah.
These are a smoke in my nose, God says. That's not where smoke belongs. It's supposed to be the incense of the prayers being offered to God. And instead of prayer of incense, they're offering them pork sandwiches being cooked before God. From a group of people, God says, I don't want to smell that pork. You say there's something wrong with pork? No, not for the Jew there's something wrong. A fire that burneth all the day. It's supposed to be the brazen altar. Not your barbecue pits. The fire gone out in the altar many times. The candlestick gone out in the time of Samuel. But their, their pork sandwich grills are still going. Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence. That's God speaking. But will recompense. Payback. Day of reckoning. Even accomplish unto their bosom. Your iniquities. Book of Isaiah and the book of Jeremiah coming up. And the iniquity of your fathers together. Why the iniquity of the fathers? Because they did not atone to what they were supposed to atone by the law. Saith the Lord. Which burneth incense upon the mountains. That's not where they were supposed to burn it. It's supposed to be in Jerusalem. At the temple. And blasted me upon the hills. Even Paul records in his writings telling the Jews, You're blaspheming the name of God in front of the Gentiles. And people say, Well, God's all finished with the Jews. No, he's not. Don't worry, Jacob's trouble will, will chastise them. And then God said, when Jesus Christ comes back, their sins I will remember no more, and a new heart I will give them. Don't worry, God will deal with the sinners of the Jews. But the Christian has the greater sin condemnation. There's coming a time for the Jew that God will say, okay, you know what? Jacob's trouble is over with. Here comes Jesus. You, uh, your sins and that, I don't remember no more. I have forgiven them. I have cleansed them. I've given you a new heart. I've given you a new covenant. They go off into the new earth. Revelation 20, 21, 22. They get a new earth, correct? We have New Jerusalem. Do you realize there are going to be saints, Christians, from the church age, who are going to walk in Jerusalem and they're not going to have crowns and they're not going to have rewards for all eternity. Because God ain't going to hand you a crown just because, okay, because, because Joe has a crown, we'll give you, no, God ain't going to do that. Oh, you know, God's all friends with the Jew and all that. No, God says, listen, okay, those Jews will go into hell, but that, that those Jews that God makes that new covenant, again, come back to the corporate of Israel. Hey, I'll give you the new earth. Now, I don't know what that new earth is going to be like, but that's going to be something like Eden. They're going to get that blessings of Adam. They're going to get that blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A Christian will go through all eternity, and if you don't serve and don't do right, and you get ashes at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to forever, ever, and ever, and all eternity suffer for them matches if you have no gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, or inheritance.
that if we do, and I don't know if we do, but when the elders cast their crowns at God, if we cast our crowns, and you ain't got a crown to, to cast, <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me for that, but I'm sorry, you're not going to the rental store in heaven and rent yourself a crown, and I'll make payments every week. That ain't going to happen. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon. You're not going to the pawn store in, in New Jerusalem down the road and get yourself a crown so you can no, it ain't gonna happen. And there are Christians, especially in the, the Ladocene church age, they're not gonna get a crown. They're not gonna get gold. They're not gonna get silver. They're not gonna get precious stone. There are Christians that got saved, all right. Whatever it is, they said a prayer, whatever. They truly got saved, and that's it. Their whole life has been dead. I'm saved, that's it, nothing else. Or they lost crowns because the Bible teaches you can lose those rewards. The Jew, the Israelite, the Hebrew, there'll be there'll be them in hell, but they'll be when that when that nation is brought before Jesus Christ. Man, that's it. New heart, sin forgiven, new earth. Therefore, I will measure their former work. There's the works. Unto their bosom. What, what's their work? Pork. What's their work? The brazen altar is going out, but their barbecue is going. Jeremiah, we're going to learn about the queen of heaven. Listen, if God is going to judge his people in Jeremiah about the queen of heaven, don't you worry, he's going to judge the Gentiles with the queen of heaven. If God's going to judge his people in Isaiah and, and, and Jeremiah of worshiping Esther, he's going to judge his Christians that bring Easter. Because if he didn't, he will have to apologize to all the Jews in Isaiah and all the Jews in Jeremiah. And he ain't going to apologize. Thus saith the Lord. As the new wine is found in the cluster. Okay, so what's the biblical definition of new wine? There it is. It's grape juice. It has not been fermented. And his grape juice has been taken from the cluster and has been fresh, freshly and made into grape juice. And that's what the proper church would use as their Lord's Supper. Great juice. And you could buy it on, on the shelf in the grocery store, and it's not in the alcohol section. It's in the grape juice section. And when we had our church in Norwich, we actually went out and purchased grapes fresh, and we put them in a juicer. juicer. And we actually had fresh new wine as according to is how old the grapes were. Now you can't get fermented grapes because grapes to be fermented become raisins. As one saith, destroy it not. God has a value on, on grapes and new wine. For a blessing is in it. It makes you happy. It's a type of the blood. It's to be used by the church. It please Israel. And I'm not talking about alcohol. The Bible says their wine is not as our wine. Their wine is, is, is the gall of serpents and, and, and just ours is fresh and new. I guarantee when Jesus said this, this is the cup and he poured wine in, it was fresh wine as uh, Nehemiah took before the king some grapes and pressed them into the, to the cup like the butler did in, in Genesis. He didn't run down to the liquor store. So I do my servant's sake, and I may not destroy them all. You keep new to wine. I mean, if, if you don't drink it all, you keep it up. It's still good for a while. You don't throw it out. 
I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. There you go. <laughs> coming out of the tribulation period. Coming out of Babylon. Out of Judah and inheritor of my mountain. See, they've been using the mountains for false worship. I'll bring somebody in the mountains who will do what they're supposed to do. And my elect, well, that's kind of an interesting word, my elect, that's 144,000, shall inherit it. And my servant shall dwell there. After God gets rid of these people who are doing the worship of gods and goddesses and no regard for God, I'll get rid of them and I'll bring in people proper. Sharon shall be a fold of flocks. In the valley of Ancor shall be a place for her to lie down for my people, Israel. They have sought me. They're not seeking God now, so don't put that today. Don't put that in Isaiah's time, and don't put it in Jeremiah's time. They're ready to kill Jeremiah. But ye are they that forsaken the Lord. Okay, that's who we've been talking about. Now verses 9 and 10. 8, 9, and 10. Okay, those are the red men of the Jews. We took a little commercial break. To, you know, God's not all finished with the Jews. Verses 1 through 7 is the Jews. They're, they're wicked. They're, they're doing wrong. They're not listening to God. Verses 8, 9, and 10. There's hope. Verse 11, okay, let's get back to the bad Jews again. I mean, verses 1 through 7 is, Son, I, I, I told you not to eat those cookies. You wait till your father gets home. Now listen, I love you and all that, but you were disobedient, and your father is going to have to deal with you. I love you. And then verses 11, dad comes home. Verse 17, 18, 19, the spanking's over. Verses 11 to 16, you got that bad boy. Come on, how come they're looking for Calvary? How come they're not looking for the second advent in the millennium? How come I don't ever hear that out of the pulpit? You know, the Old Testament saints they look forward to Calvary. Uh, uh, excuse me, second advent too? <laughs> Is that erased from the Old Testament? The second advent in the millennium? Is that erased? Well, you know, Abraham, he brought Isaac up. You mean up there was three was three crosses? I don't think so. Even the disciples weren't waiting for Calvary. At Calvary, when Calvary came, they weren't there. Why? Because all Israel is in disobedience still. That God says about my people, I love them, they're great, they're my people, you leave them alone. If you curse them, I'll curse you. If you bless them, I'll bless you. But man, they're stiff-necked. I know a couple saved Jews, and you know what? They're stiff-necked. Sometimes you got to fight yourself. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. There's you. Back off. They can get your dander up. Save ones. I believe a saved Jew is just as worse as a lost Jew for cursing and all that. Because they are Jesus Christ. But ye are they that forsake the Lord <clears throat> and have forgotten my holy mountain. That's Jerusalem. They got other mountains. And they're doing all kinds of things up in those mountains. That prepare the table for that truth. 
and furnish the drink offerings unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword. So prepare the table and the drink offering. That's not God's drink offering. That's not God's service on those mountains. And God said, okay, you numbered and all that. I'll number you. So spiritualize the Christian. If the Christian is disobedient in his church service and his Christian life, you're no better than the heathen as the Israelites are no better than the heathen that are doing the same things that they're doing. And God's just not going, oh, I don't see that. No. As a matter of fact, as a Christian and as a child of God, the Jewish person in the Old Testament, since you have the law and you have it written what God doesn't want, and the Christian has the Bible to what God doesn't want, and you do what God doesn't want, and the question arises that God cursed the ground and the sorrows for Eve and Adam. How come God did not kill Cain when he murdered his brother. Does not God say out through the scriptures, a murderer shall die? Because that was not, Cain had no idea of that penalty of the law. Capital punishment for a murderer was not revealed to man to Noah came out of the ark. So when you got somebody coming along preaching that Christmas and Easter and, and Valentine's is all wrong for the church and all that, and you get upset at the preacher, you have now the revelation, hey, there's a possibility what you're doing is wrong, and if you continue to do that wrong, you're in trouble. That's what gets them so mad. I'm now without excuse. That man that's on the street, oh, oh, every every week you're coming to preach that Jesus, you're coming to preach that Jesus, because he knows he's under condemnation, because he knows that Jesus is the truth, and he didn't ever wanted to know that. People don't like the idea when they buy their pack of cigarettes and it says on their pack of cigarettes, oh, this can cause lung disease, and this can, I, I don't want to, I enjoy it. And then they get mad at the doctor and the doctor tells them you got lung disease. When you were warned, you were warned, you were warned, you were warned. You know what Israel or Judah is going to do in Jeremiah's time? They're going to get ferocious with Jeremiah. They're going to want to kill him. They want to put they put him in jail. His own home, his own hometown, rah, 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 wants him dead. Why? He preaches the truth. There are Christians that want me dead. I guarantee there are people who want me dead. Why? There are people, Christians and churches that hate me. I even been told, we got to change your Facebook post. Why? Because I preach the truth. Because why would you be upset with my Facebook post if I didn't say anything about the truth? What, what have I, I posted on Facebook every single day? White chocolate is the best thing in the whole world. White chocolate is the best thing in the whole world. White chocolate. So, I mean, you got all different kinds of but I mean, that's not a standard. That's, hey, you know what? That guy just likes white chocolate. That's good. But, you know, I like milk chocolate. I like regular chocolate. I like vanilla. I like strawberry. I like, you know. He's not having a third. He used to say, you know what? Every single day, white chocolate's the best. But when he says, thus say of the Lord, this is the fact, that's the fact, this is archaeology, this is what the Bible says, this is what the church says, this is what her church history says, this is what the truth is, and I keep kicking, I keep kicking, I keep kicking. And this is what Isaiah is doing. And they're not too pleased to hear this message, because they enjoy their pork sandwiches. They enjoy their mountaintop revivals. Though they're doing it without God. Therefore will I number you to the sword. War. 
That's what that is. That's war. I'll number you to the sword. That's war. And Babylon will come. Nineveh will come. You shall all bow down to the slaughter. You're going to fall at death. Because when I called, you did not answer. You say, well, how does God call? What, what, what phone number does God call? Isaiah, will you go tell them the truth? Jeremiah, will you go tell them the truth? Elijah, will you go tell them the truth? Jesus, will you go tell them the truth? Paul, will you go tell them the truth? Stiley, will you go tell them the truth? That's how God calls. Will you go into the bookstore? Will you go online and get yourself a King James Bible? Well, I don't have to listen to Stiley. I got other preachers out there. I don't have to get a King James Bible. There's other Bibles out there. I don't have to listen to that guy. I can find a person on the radio. I don't have to listen to that church. I can find someone on the television. I just don't have to listen. How about if I just call the police? Then you're not you're not answering the phone. And they're today people they're too busy on the phones and not busy with God. When I spoke, you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes. You did worse. I have, I have tried to help Christians countless times over and over since 1987, 34, 35 years. And I've seen, and their lives are today are ruined. If they're not in church, they're in a very questionable kind of church. And that church is doing all kinds of questionable things. And did not choose wherein I delighted not. You didn't do what God wanted to do. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, my servants, plural, shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. <clears throat> Jeremiah. <laughs> We're going to read about the Babylon's going to come walking up to Jeremiah and say, Jeremiah, let me clean you off here. Yeah, you know why this all happened? No. Because God did it to these people. They sinned it. That's what I've been saying. Yeah, just confirming what you've been saying. You're right. You want some grapes? You're over there. Raisins too. We got some watermelon. We got some. We got some beef over there on the fire. Don't go over there. There's pork. <laughs> I know you guys can't have pork. You know we like pork. Don't go over there. And I tell you what, you know, if you want to come to Babylon with us, hey, get on my get on my ass. I'll take you. If you want to stay here? It's all before you. Meanwhile, all those that didn't listen to Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, they're dead. Or they're being carried off to Babylon in chains. And I don't think they're getting grapes. And I don't, They're probably eating pork. They're, oh yeah, they're eating pork now, but now they're being forced to. You know, no? What did they try to give Daniel and Shadrach and Eshach? They tried to give him the king's meat. You know what the king's meat was? Stuff that violated the dietary law. And Daniel's like, uh-uh. I ain't doing that. I'd rather have beans. <laughs> and I'm not selling my birthright out. God takes care of his prophets. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. It's that's what your devils and your gods did. They're not giving you what you wanted. Me, God, I'll, hey, you do right, you get right. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy in heart, the heart. You shall cry of sorrow of heart. You shall howl for vexation of spirit. That's not what they wanted. They 
are not going to get the peace of God when they do wicked. There is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. Even if you are a child of God, for ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. And the Lord God shall slay thee, and shall call his servants by another name. Over and over, it seems like we're all going to get a brand new name. Even the Jews. I mean, would, would David really appreciate having the name of David for all eternity when David is referenced to Bathsheba in his sin? How about getting the, How about David, your new name? Surely goodness. Would Solomon really appreciate his name being associated with a thousand wives? How about name gold? I mean, that, that, that gold and silver represent his, his kingdom. Maybe he gets the name of Ophir. The gold of Ophir. That'd be a very bad thing to compare it to his grandmother and and his, uh, 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 I don't know what it'd be, grandmother-in-law, whatever it is, when Ophir went back and he gets the name of Ophir. Ruth stayed. How about Ruth getting the name? How about Ruth not having a moment by his name? How about Ruth getting a new name of Faithful? Or Wheat? You know why some people are afraid of oh, Ruth getting a new name? Because their new name may be Sour. Deception. Fraud. Say this prayer. Unfaithful. You think there'd be names like that in heaven? You think God's going to give you a crown where you didn't deserve a crown? Well, no. You think God's going to give you a name that you're not worthy of? I mean, if you're given a good Christian name on this earth like John and James and all that, and you're not worthy of that name and glory, why should we call you that? Even Paul got a new name. Because he didn't want to be referenced to Saul. I don't think you wanted your name as Benjamin in heaven. Benjamin stood up for a bunch of sodomites. Benjamin was almost wiped out. They had to go steal women to keep their, their tribe alive. Judges. New name. That he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. God of truth. Jesus said, I am the way the... Tell the Jehovah Witnesses, let's go... Do a swan dive in hell. Because the former troubles are forgotten. Oh, ho, there's the millennium. There's eternal life. Wait till you read the next verses. Cancer. In glory, what's cancer? Well, you know, I, I when I was on earth, I died of cancer. What's that? My miserable, rotten children. Well, what's a miserable, rotten ch You know, my children, on life, they were miserable, rotten ch What's that? You know, uh, uh, on earth, I, I, I couldn't get the victory over alcohol. What's alcohol? Well, you remember what, no, I don't remember what that is. We don't remember the troubles. Israel's not going to go to the new earth and say, Hamas? What's, what's a Hamas? <laughs> now, you can't say that about Ishmael because Ishmael may be in glory. You read about his life. The Bible says Ishmael went to his place, like just as much as Abraham went to his place. And I mean, but his children... The former troubles are forgotten, 
the Bible says in Revelation, I make all things new, something like that. And because they are hid from my eyes, that's God. There's a point in Revelation 21, all tears will be wiped away. What's a tear? When we came into New Jerusalem, I remember something God wiping off my eyes. I don't remember what that was anymore. <clears throat> now watch this. Watch this. Let's see the Bible played out. Verse 17. Verse 17. Let's see if this sounds familiar. For behold, I, God, create new heavens and new earth. Does that sound familiar? We look forward to Calvary. Okay, watch. And the former thing shall not be remembered. There it is again. Nor come into mind. Verse 19. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and the joy of my... Where's New Jerusalem? It's not there. Why? Because New Jerusalem is not for the Jews. It's for the church. Are you telling me they saw Calvary, but they didn't see the church? The church, in the doctrine of the church of the Old Testament, they, they, they have the mountain peaks of prophecy, they call it. And there's the mountain peak of the first advent. And then there's the mountain peak of the second advent. And the church is in the valley. <laughs> And even Paul says the church of the Jew and Gentile coming together in one body, that's a mystery. New Jerusalem's not here because it's a mystery. And yet God knows. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. The former thing. Now, who are the only group of people in Isaiah's time? Jews and Gentiles. All right, so who gets the new heavens? The Gentiles. Who gets that earth? The Jew. The land, the land, the land, the land, the land. With no enemies of Israel at all. There is no PLO in that new earth. There is no Arabians in that earth. There is no Catholics in that earth. There are no KKK on that earth. There are no Germans on that earth. There is nobody on that new earth that hates the Jews. Now that's a heaven for the Jew. When the Jewish Hebrew Israeli gets a piece of land, the new earth with no curse, and there's no enemies. Right now, Hamas is an enemy in the land of Israel. There's no land of Palestine. That's a United Nations flop. The land properly in the Bible is called the land of Israel, not the land of Palestine. The former thing shall not be remembered. For the Jew, all their sins. Every single sin that the nation of Israel has done since Exodus. God says, I don't remember them at all no more. Now, how can you say God's all finished with it? And who's another type of that? Who's another type of the Christian in the church? All your sins. I don't remember. If they're under the blood. If they're not under the blood, you'll deal with it at the judgment seat of Christ and you'll suffer loss. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. From be, for behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people in joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, not new Jerusalem, for the joy of my people and the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her. Where did you read that one? Revelation 21, 22. And God shall wipe away all our tears, all our tears, including the Jews. Voice of crying. There shall no more be infant of days. 
The old man that has not filled his days, for the child shall die a hundred years old. That's We're in the millennium now. The hundred year old people living in the millennial be nothing new. Now, can you imagine women a hundred years giving babies, a hundred babies in their lifetime? Say impossible. How old was Sarah? She was 19. She had a baby. You see it playing all out again? You see it played out all again? A child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner, there are sinners in the millennium, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. Oh, you don't want to be a sinner in the millennium. You say, all have sinned. Better be careful about the millennium. That's a whole different time frame. Don't you go be running the church age doctrines and throw it in the millennium. Uh, uh, Solomon said all have sinned he wrote that in the Old Testament Paul said all have sinned he says a church age doctrine that's not a millennium doctrine don't go messing with the scriptures now the Bible says the study to show thyself that proves unto God the workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth he said well, I have no idea what's going to happen in the millennium I'll find out when I get there and they shall build houses, millennium, and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards in the millennium and eat the fruit of them. So there's grapes and new wine in the millennium. A lot of Baptists want to carry that over to heaven. It don't say heaven. It says millennium. Well, you know, Jesus sat down and had a meal with the disciples on the earth. Not in heaven. Are we going to eat in heaven? Who cares? <laughs> Thinking about your stomach again. They shall not build in another habit enemies. They shall not plant another eat enemies. As for the days of a tree are the days of my people. I, I see men walking the streets. And there's a part in, in Deuteronomy he says where you, you know if you don't listen you curse it. And, and I'll let your enemies come in, take your wives, take your houses, take your lands. That's the enemy. That's not going to happen here. My elect, that's Israel, shall long, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. A thousand years. They shall not labor in vain. In other words, they're going to plant a fig tree and they're going to get figs. And when Jesus comes up to that tree, there will be figs and he'll not find no fruit. You won't find weeds. You won't find bugs. You won't need the, the exterminator. So there's hope for Florida. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. That's not America, that's Israel. And their offspring, their children with them. So don't tell me God's all finished with Israel. It shall come to pass that they that call, uh-oh, here we go, I will answer. God's been calling them. That's the old, you know, the busy single when I grew up as a child. They're going to, Jesus, yeah. Hold on for a minute. What? And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The implication is today, while they're living in sin, God's not really listening. Because you guarantee that the Israel is like, oh God, please stop those missiles. Oh Lord, we stop them. You didn't want my son. I'm chastising you. How many times when the father takes that child, ah, 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 no, I ain't done yet. 
Even Proverbs said, spare not their crying. I think it's so funny when it came to with my children, my daughter. She started crying even before. I was like, yo, I haven't even started it. Shut up. And I quote to her, spare not their crying. You'll be crying afterwards. Don't start in now. Here we go, verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, not each other. The wolf and the lamb, you mean where Jesus and Paul and, and throughout the Bible says the wolf in sheath clothing? That's all gone. The wolf that's in sheath clothing has been cast into hell. And they're not getting goat feed because the goats are cast into hell. Wolves in sheep clothing in churches feed goat feed. They don't feed sheep feed. When you got every Sunday morning salvation, 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 and pretty little messages and Mother's Day mess and Father's Day. Listen, that, that's 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 sheep. That's, that's not sheep food. That's goat food. And the lion shall eat straw like a bullock. Uh, you mean those massive teeth? That's not what happened in Daniel's time with the with the presidents that wanted Daniel dead. Imagine sitting down, you're going down the road, and there's a lion having a salad. In the you sure can't say that's today. Nope, I've, I've studied, I've read books about the lions. Watch this one, ready? Dust shall be the serpent's meat. That's Genesis 3.14. The only thing that still remains of the curse of Genesis 3 is that serpent eating dust. The snakes are still there. I don't know why they're still there, but there they are. be kind of creepy in the millennium i'm just saying i'm throwing this out the serpents start talking to you <laughs> maybe the lions start talking to you maybe the wolves start talking to you i mean they can do it in cartoon land satan knows something we didn't i mean the serpent starts speaking to eve and he's like uh uh why is this thing talking to me she never says that she just carries a conversation like no big deal They shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mount. You won't need animal control in the millennium. And who says all this? Thus saith the Lord. So you know it's going to happen. You know it's true. Because God said it. The whole entire animal kingdom, and all the entire uh, in the millennium, the curse is removed except for the serpent. And I'm telling you, if you want to find me, you find me where the tomatoes are. I'll be happy. There'll be no weeds, no bugs. There's still sin. And most important, Jesus Christ will be seated in Jerusalem on David's throne, King of kings and Lord of lords, and the nation of Israel will be in their land. The temple will be there. The sons of Zadok will be there. The sons of Phinehas will be there. And there'll be no Hamas. There'll be no Muslims, no Catholics, no Arabians. And Israel will be in perfect peace because the Antichrist and the false prophet will be in the lake of fire while the devil is locked up for a thousand years. That's, that's a wonderful ending.